before you export your document and for printing and uh, distribution, it's always a good idea to check your pre-flight panel. And I can see I have an error here. That little red light tells me that. So I'm going to go here, open up my pre-flight panel. I can see I have one overset text frame on page two. So that'll take me to page two, and I can see right away where my problem is. If you see this little red X here, that indicates that when I changed this to swash, it pushed some of my type outside the text frame, and that's called overset text. If I open up my text frame here, I can see where my problem is. If I just delete that extra, let's go to normal view here. If I just delete that extra and close up my frame, you can see that's good now, and I have the little no errors green light. You should always do this before you package or otherwise export your document. Make sure that you don't have any other problems. So first we're going to package it for just packaging it for output so that we'll have one folder with absolutely all of the files needed for this project very easy to do. InDesign really has automated this feature for us. So we go File, Package. It'll give us a summary of the fonts in the document. It'll tell us if our links are good, what colors were used, and just go ahead and choose Package. And we have to save it first, of course. This little instruction file is just something for the printer that will tell the fonts and the colors used in the document. So let InDesign create that. Just click Continue. And now we get a little bit of a more complicated box. Now InDesign is going to create a whole new folder for us. And obviously you should know where that folder is going to be. Um, and you can choose to copy the fonts if you want to. In this case I'm not going to. You want to probably copy your linked graphics and make sure that the graphic links are all updated in the package. This down here include IDML, that is InDesign Markup Language, and you want to leave this checked if you would like to open this file in a version of InDesign older than the one that you're using. So say you wanted to go back to CS6 and be able to open this file, leave that checked. I don't need it right now, so I'm unchecking it. Include PDF print. I'm going to uncheck this as well simply because I want to make my own custom PDF print file. So I'm going to, um, I actually want to make an interactive PDF file. So I'm going to unclick that. Package. InDesign creates a nice new folder for me and neatly packages everything that I need. Uh, for that folder. Here's the folder it just made. I've got a links panel, I've got a copy of my InDesign document, and I have the instructions. So this now I'm going to create my PDF. It's going to be an interactive PDF, and I'm going to put it in the same folder. Back to my document, file, in this case, export. Adobe PDF Interactive. And let's choose that folder. I'm going to put it into the folder that we just made. Click Save. And in this case, we want all pages. We'd like to view it after exporting. Page thumbnails are good. Uh, you can add um, page transitions here, but we really don't want to. Um, we want all forms and media to be included, and very important to have this checked, create tagged PDF. Now you'll notice, this is new in Creative Cloud, that this publish online feature is also available, and we will deal with that in a future video. Uh, JPEG quality, we can leave that at medium. I usually raise up my resolution to 144. Click OK. And here is our interactive PDF. You can see our interactive features are working beautifully. And if we click on our bookmarks tab over here, 
InDesign has created all of these bookmarks because we did the interactive table of contents. And uh, our project is finished.